Good morning, Upper Sixth. Over breakfast this morning, I was thinking about this article from Sam Chambers from the Times from the weekend, which we've already explored. And I thought to myself, a successful company like the Fraser's Group, before that, Sports Direct, obviously used to be run by this cheeky chappy here. Um, why would they buy a company for £52 million and then close it three months later? I believe there's another reason behind this. I don't know what it is, clearly, because I'm just a Dalmatian. But you've got to think about why have they done this? Yeah, Did they think that they were honestly going to turn this company around so quickly? Um, and now they've gone in, they've so they're, they're going to close it, possibly, probably, and cost 553 jobs in the meantime. OK, we'll explore that maybe in the 10 marker a little bit. Um, so I've had a look at this. I've, I started with the intention of writing a full half paper under time conditions. And then the sun looked like it was coming out and I decided not to. However, I'm going to include extract B in um, this for you, which I've got from Matches Fashion Limited Accounts. And there's a couple of things you could be doing with it. Quick note on their limited accounts. Many students think that um, limited companies, one of the benefits of being limited over PLC is transparency of data. The level of transparency of data for a limited company is a little bit less, possibly, depending how much you uh, want to declare, um, than a PLC. However, debt, sales, uh, profitability, everything is in an accounts. Um, if you're a very small company, well, you're not going to be declaring a lot of your accounts. As you become a medium and, and then a large, the requirements for disclosure become a little bit more intense and your accountants will be able to explain that to you. I'm only a Dalmatian. I don't understand accountancy laws. Um, however, looking at matches fashion accounts that are available online for free back to 2003 uh, there's enough information in there for you to make a judgment about the company the most recent accounts are relatively detailed and there's lots of information about macroeconomic factors that are influencing the company it mentions the ukraine war and that they can't trade in russia anymore for example it's talking about inflation rates it's talking about loads of things OK, so I've used a bit of those accounts and an article that I found online from the business of fashion to come up with data extract A. Extract B, I've just given you a screenshot of part of their accounts and you could be revising things like trend analysis. Have a look at the accounts or a company that you're interested in or your school's accounts. If you go to a private school, most of them are charities. They're available for free from the Charity Commission. Go and have a look at how good their business is from an accountancy perspective. So you can have a look at trend analysis of certain aspects in the accounts. You can have a look at working capital analysis, the ability to obviously pay their short term debts. Uh, liquidity ratio is always a favourite to chuck into an exam paper for paper two or paper three. Uh, maybe there's some companies out there that are going to be in a load of debt or not. Um, all their debt ratios look OK, but once you look at the qualitative information, it's still pretty hideous sometimes. Um, debt to equity, less tested, but you might want to have a look at that. And then we've got um, inventory turnover and receivables turnover. Um, you can do just practice some of those skills that you might need to use. Doing it from a real perspective might be a bit more interesting. If you want to have a look at Matches Fashion Limited, there's the URL to Companies House and you can download them for free. Have some fun. Moving on, Data Extract A, the top bit to there is based on Business of Fashion article. The bottom bit is from their 2000 uh, for matches fashion 2023 accounts now i've put this into paragraphs for you some students don't like this because it's not in a table and therefore it's not easy to look at and it's not in the order of the balance sheet that they've sort of memorized in class um, you need to be able to deal with both so we've done a previous video with numbers being in a table um, and here you have to think a bit more and some of the information is that you need, for example, if I, this isn't one of the questions, if I wanted to work out the percentage return rate, 
I would take their order, sales before returns, and down here, I've got their revenue, sales after returns. Now, we know what revenue is. Um, I could have just left that description out to make you think about it. But actually, these figures leapt off the page for me. They've got a 49 point something percent returns rate. What is this? Someone buying a design address, leaving the tag in, going to a party, um, sending it back. Hopefully they've not spilt something down the front of it. Um, that is a ridiculous returns rate. No wonder Mike Ashley, one of the first things he did was start charging people for their returns. Um, can't blame him. Yeah. So actually, that's one thing that you can get from reading um, accounts is actually look at their business model. Terrible. Anyway. So what we've got here is we've got the um, financial position statement here. Um, lots of in interesting information in here. Ignore the notes section down here because clearly all of these have got a paragraph or two written about them in the accounts. So you can actually have a look at what do they mean by called up share capital, for example. Now, this one is very is fascinating. This one hasn't got a note next to it. And. Why would they bring your attention to the company's been losing money for at least three years, maybe more. Um, and this is the refund from the tax man. Um, stick a couple of three zeros on the end of that. And um, thank you very much, Inland Revenue, for the £1.2 million tax rebate. Um, under insolvency laws in the UK, again, I'm a Dalmatian, not an insolvency lawyer. Sorry if I've got this slightly wrong. Um, you cannot run your company and expect it to always make a loss okay if there's a glimmer of light at the end of the tunnel and your business plans and your accountants are happy to sign off on it um actually you're losing money at the moment because of whatever reasons in the future you make profit then my understanding is you can carry on i'm not sure how long the inland revenue would be happy to keep paying refunds not quite sure maybe one of your parents are a tax lawyer and they can explain it to you. And if you're one of my students, can that parent come in and do a talk on um, this type of thing? Insolvency legislation from an accountancy perspective is quite exciting for us Dalmatians. <coughs> Lots of information there for you, have fun with it. So here is what we need to calculate, is our first one. So we know that we need to calculate gross profit margin and it's between this and this. Lazy students read this question a bit like this and they go, oh, I'm going to do that one. And they calculate that, they calculate that, they move on and they wonder why they get three marks out of four, losing 25% of their marks. And the bit here is the common mistake that students make. We could class this as our hook, really, not that we're going to write an essay, but we need to calculate the change. Um, and that's the bit that people will miss. And I'll go through that again later. So we've got one risk, not benefit, not limitation. We've got a risk here to the Fraser Group of its takeover of matches fashion. Uh, clearly, I'm going to define that in context and we'll do a walkthrough of that one in a bit. Assess the likely benefits. This is one of those mean 10 markers where we need to write nearly a 12 mark structure without the mops, of course. Uh, we need two benefits. If you just answer the question, one P paragraph benefit, another P paragraph benefit, answer the question, it's a benefit, justify, it's a benefit, um, you've got no balance at all and you're going to get capped probably at level two, maximum probably five out of ten. There's no balance. So we need two benefits because there's an S on the end of benefit and we need balance, which means you're shoving a however in context on the end of each of them. OK, at this point, you should pause the video for 22 minutes and you should answer these 18 marks worth of questions in that 22 minutes plus extra time if you're entitled to it. Only type if you type in the exam. And um, if you use voice to text, then do voice to text. But the majority of you will be getting out a black pen. OK. Write in black because that's the colour you'll be writing in the exam because they, your papers need to be scanned when they go off to Excel. So go away, write these, see how you get on, pause the video, we'll do a walkthrough in a bit.
did you pause the video? Of course you didn't. So here we are. We are defining, to start off with, with writing a formula in words for gross profit margin. We remember that we are going to calculate the change yeah, um, between that date and that date, which means we need to calculate the gross profit margin for those two dates and then calculate the difference. So we are going to write the formula in words. I might write GP margin, GP and TR down the bottom. I'm still going to get away with that. That's fine. This is my knowledge mark. Now, more importantly than that is it gives me the structure of what I need to go to the case study and find. I would normally write this first and then go and find the information. OK, so I know I need gross profit. I know I need total revenue um, from two years. So I would find that from the case study. You'll notice I've written down these formulas in the sorry, these numbers, sorry, in the order of the formula. OK, I'm not I haven't got a sea of numbers scattered all over the page um, demonstrating how confused I am with with numeracy. I'm I'm formatting my structure around the formula. It's quicker, it's easier. Write the formula and show your workings. If you don't show your workings because this is too easy for you and you get it wrong, you're going to get zero marks. If you still get it wrong, show all your workings. You might get three out of four. But this is easy math, so you should get four out of four, shouldn't you? 100% of your marks on a four marker throughout your paper one and paper two, 16% of your marks. You only need level four in your essays then to get an A star, probably. I'm going to repeat this for 2023. I've got the numbers. I'm then going to do my calculations and I'm going to show my workings. I can see that I've put a percentage on the end of this because it is a margin question. This is my unit descriptor. Without that, then we might have a problem. So I'm then going to repeat it. I'm then going to take one away from the other. Now, I don't need to write slight improvement. The reason I've written that is for me, if paper one, paper two follow the same format as the last couple of years worth of papers, the chief examiners have been writing questions in a way that helps us to use some of the earlier information in some of the longer essays later. It's not necessarily going to happen this year, but actually you've got to do your questions in the order of the paper, keep your flow going. You'll be on autopilot if you practice timing enough. More importantly, I've written slight improvement there because if I get an investment appraisal essay question later, which I might be if I've seen that massive data extract B, then maybe I can use this slight improvement. However, in the future, if the improvement in gross profit margin continues to grow, yeah, maybe this becomes a profitable business model. OK, maybe. It's only gross profit, though, isn't it? We'll see. Here is our explain one risk to the Fraser Group of its takeover of match fashion. Now, I need to define, this is my plan, I'm going to put a K next to that. I'm going to define that in context. Now, when defining takeover, if I literally just say Fraser Group bought matches fashion, um, then in some ways that's a bit of a definition. Um, but it doesn't help me think about some of the evidence points that I might use. A common mistake is the second application mark is lost because people forget to do it. I advise you to write this on four different lines. I advise you to say one example and then another example. Get onto autopilot with this and then you won't forget the second application point. Another problem with these with some essay with some students sorry is they write multiple analysis points. Okay? The Im overall impact of this is it impacts it impacts it impacts it. Well, I've seen some that have three possible impacts here. Well, there's only one analysis mark, so all you're doing is you're wasting time on a time trap question. This is easy. Takeovers are exciting. A-level students will remember the definition for takeovers. If they get too excited, they spend 10 minutes writing this because they just want to impress someone. They won't impress anyone when they leave a 12 marker blank. So, a takeover involves Fraser Group acquiring majority control of Matches Fashion to expand its 
market presence or diversify its brand portfolio. OK, now up to there, we've got enough definition there to get our knowledge mark. Now, this flows quite nicely and it gives me a reason why they've done it. And there might be another reason which we explore in the 10 marker. Um, but I just wanted to have something there to prompt me. So I'd write my definition. I would then go and find two bits of evidence. One example, what a nice way of starting that sentence, is the Fraser Group, the retail group owned by British high street tycoon Mike Ashley, has agreed to buy the luxury e-tailer um, Match Fashion for just £52 million. Pounds. Now that seems a bit of a gobful, to be honest with you. Um, do we need all of it? One, one example of this is the Fraser Group. Hang on, let's get rid of that. And get rid of that. Let's not quote entire sentences unless we need them. Let's think about our time. The Fraser Group has agreed to buy the luxury e-tail match fashion for just £52 million. Pounds. Yep, it's a quote, so it says just. We'll get away with that. I'm not being dismissive by using that. So hopefully the chief examiner won't be mean and say, oh, doesn't the student understand the value of money? Um, this is a quote, so we're fine. Now, that could possibly be a risk because there's a financial risk of 52 million quid. I think we're OK. We don't need this bit of this sentence, so we could just chop that out. Another example of this was buying the upmarket e-tailer to boost its elevation strategy. OK, well, that sounds like a positive to me. And as a, as a student, I might write this because I'm thinking another example um, of this takeover is. I'm thinking, well, what about risks? And it is an example of the takeover. Um, am I going to get the marks? And instead of me sitting there and crying for five minutes over it, I'm going to put a negative into this sentence as well. And this is where I remembered their refund rate and then I calculated it. OK, and I've dumped it in the middle of that. It's easy peasy maths. Uh, you've got to you've got to be able to master percentages sort of in your sleep. And therefore, you can use the numbers. What a what a good negative. Well, not a good negative, but you know what I mean. What a wonderful risk to this business model. Look at that return. That's such a hideous return rate. Then we're thinking about the overall impact. The firm reported a significant operating loss of. We may as well use it, hey? This quote shows the financial risk Fraser Group faces in turning around the fortunes of a company currently operating at a loss. So this contextualizes the financial risk. We could get away with this, you know, overall these points demonstrate the financial risk of turning around this company currently operating at a loss in some ways. But these figures up here don't talk about a loss. This talks about a purchase price. This talks about a ridiculous uh, returns rate. And then down here, maybe we need to contextualise operating at a loss, which is the only reason I dropped in a third piece of evidence. You don't need a third piece of evidence, but you do need your analysis point to be applied. OK, hopefully that's useful. That's significantly less than lots of people uh, write for these questions, but it might be more than others. Write in four bullet points. You don't need chains of argument. So here is our mean 10 marker. The only reason it's mean is because it's one of those that we need benefits. So we have to write P, however, P, however, AJ. Answer the question, justify your, your answer. So the likely benefits is our hook. Yep, so I'll put my H there to the Fraser Group of acquiring, that's my knowledge, acquisition, match fashion. Okay, so it's the benefits to of acquiring. So we're going to need to start off with a definition of acquisition. Acquiring refers to the Fraser Group's strategic action of purchasing match fashion an acquisition or takeover. 
made it absolutely crystal clear. Now you'll notice that I put MF in brackets here and I'll be honest with you I don't want to be writing that 10 times it's quite a long company name I've abbreviated it at the beginning of my answer um, and therefore I can abbreviate it for the rest of it it's the same as when you write an academic essay for something like your EPQ or something like that now because MF might be in multiple questions I would need to I think to be safe to do this at the start of each question, I intend to do this if there was multiple questions on this company. And that's because, remember, as long as you've not asked for extra paper or type, um, your, your answer booklet will probably be marked by eight or ten different examiners. OK, because what they'll do is they'll chop off the margins um, off the binding bit. Sorry, that's why you have to write within a certain amount of the page and then it's it's scanned at a million miles an hour and then different examiners will mark it. It helps with consistency of marking, I'm sure. So don't presume if I write this in one question that the next question, the examiner will just know that it's mine unless you type. OK, we're going to go on. So MF acquisition is linked to Fraser's elevation strategy. I've listed this on different lines for you instead of writing point effect evidence. OK, I've underlined the connectives for you. We only need three chains of argument here because uh, it's a 10 marker. We don't need those wide ranging arguments um, like we see in the 12 markers. However, if you contextualize everything you write, you're going to find it really hard to just write three chains of argument. So my advice is don't sound like a textbook and just contextualize everything. Chains of argument are then easy. The acquisition of MF is beneficial because benefit beneficial. Yeah. Wow, using the words from the question, is directly aligned to Fraser Group's strategy, uh, strategic goal of moving up market. That's actually more application. This market development strategy, now those quotation marks are around that for another reason than them being, it's not evidence from the case study, I should say. Now, I wonder what Ansoff would say about these words. Now, if I'm seeing a company, existing product, clothes going into a new market up market um you know you're all memorized and soft so why would you not drop it into a chain of argument quite nice but it's a 10 marker it's a bit of application you're going to get an application mark for that um, leads to enhanced brand portfolio that includes luxury and online retail resulting in increased brand reputation and market presence up to that point a little bit of application, not a lot. For phrases, dot, 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 not use the entire sentence this time, the e-tailer is a boost to its elevation strategy, which was actually the point, but we've just put it into context. OK, that was context anyway. That's a bit abstract with a little bit of context and obviously a nice bit of application for a use of a theory. So it's applied a lot. Nice three chains of argument, maybe four, depending on how you're counting. However, here's another chain of argument because it's part of my argument for this point. But it's the balance we need. Despite the increase in order demand, revenue saw a slight decline of 1.7 percent, indicating percent, uh, potential challenges in realising financial benefits from this acquisition. So up here, they're acquiring it to help them with their elevation strategy. And down here, it might actually be hard to get the financial benefits from it. This is the counter argument to this and also is using some information that I might have used in my previous four marker, because this is actually talking about the returns rate. And I've noticed that from looking at the returns so the initial order rate versus revenue, maybe I've just um, identified that. Here's my other. The takeover prevents next. This is why I think they bought it, by the way. But, you know, who am I? I'm just a Dalmatian. From acquiring, um, next from acquiring MF, eliminating the competitive threat. That's a nice chain of argument. Acquiring MF is strategic because it blocks Next, a direct competitor, as application, from expanding into the luxury market. 
education. This leads to maintaining a competitive advantage in the retail sector, resulting in safeguarded market share, maybe protecting its market share, and slowing competition growth, as in nexts. Fraser's is believed to have beaten out competition from British retailer Next. So that's the quote from the thingy, that, um, from the case study, even the thingy. Um, and then we want to interpret it. If you interpret evidence, it, it normally creates another chain of argument. This illustrates, or this could be interpreted as, if we wanted, this illustrates the competitive context of the acquisition. That's why I've interpreted it in that way, and I've just explained it. OK, there is more than three when I counted through that. Um, you can decide if you agree or not. I wonder what's coming next. Yes, it's the however and more chains of argument. So hard to only write three. However, match fashion's financials, not the entire sentence, show a total comprehensive loss for the year of that amount of money. Interpretation of the data suggesting the financial risk Fraser Group assumes in preventing next, assume, sorry, in preventing next acquisition. OK, they're stopping next from having it because it might actually damage their market share in the luxury sector. And down here, they're losing money and they're definitely losing that, aren't they? OK, maybe. Overall. Let's answer the question. This is where we pause. We go back to the question. We quickly look benefits of acquiring to the Fraser Group. OK, because we don't want to accidentally be daft and answer the wrong question. Overall, the main benefit of acquiring MF for Fraser Group is the integration with its current high end brands such as, such as flannels, um, supporting its elevation strategy and market positioning. Now, I didn't want this just to be a repeat of something I've already written, um, but it is the overall benefit, probably. And we thought we'd contextualise that because other high end brands. OK, so that's in the case study. So we're fine. And then we think about our justification without the acquisition. OK, we have got acquisition acquiring without the acquisition down here. See if it's a slightly different argument to justify. Fraser Group would risk allowing competitors like Next to strengthen their foothold in the luxury market, potentially competing with Fraser's existing brands and undermining its objectives to upscale its brand. Now, that's a bit of a repeat, let's be honest. Um, it, but it adds a slightly different spin to it. And it's not just the weak justifications we see, which is simply a repeat of what we've seen. It's imagining that opportunity cost if we would have taken the second best option, which is not to buy it. OK, maybe next have suddenly got it and maybe next start to squeeze some of that luxury market share away from Fraser's. Your question should be, is it perfect? Probably not, but is it level four? And this is all we care about. And I'm not going to go through the standards. You can pause and read the video. Um, so if this was an assess the likely impact or reasons, um, we're going to do a simplistic, quick, slightly quicker 10 mark structure. Unless you type or write really quickly, then just write this structure all the time. It's up to you. Um, however, for this type of question, likely benefits, likely limitations, likely disadvantages, if it's a 10 marker, you would be writing this. OK, obviously, if it was an eight marker, assess the likely benefits, assess the likely limitations, then you would only write this for an eight marker and not the conclusion. Hopefully that was useful.